And now a little story from the apple seed. So, I grew up in Osaka, Japan, and came to Massachusetts in mid-80s as an exchange student to the University of Massachusetts. And once I got there, I liked it a lot. I decided to live there and raise a family. And now I have a son. I have one son, and his name is Charlie. My son is all grown up now, and I am actually a proud grandmother of a three-year-old, and my granddaughter's name is Ruby. <laughs> so I became a storyteller first when my son, Charlie, was in kindergarten. I used to go into his classroom and tell his friends stories from Japan. They used to love me. I did that every year, year after year after year, until my son turned a seventh grader when he told me not to show up at his school anymore. <laughs> In fact, he told me he will never speak to me again if I came. <laughs> so that's when I started visiting other schools and tell other uh, children, other people's children, stories. So my son wrote this haiku. Stealth is my game. In midnight black, I travel for my secret mission. Mom, I want to be a ninja. Hiya! My son said when he was in kindergarten, old enough to go on his first trick or treating. I was glad and relieved. Glad because I wanted him to uh, be proud of his cultural heritage. I mean, Halloween is not really a Japanese tradition, but I thought it was appropriate for him to want to be a ninja. And relieved because of the dismal lack of my sewing ability. I'm the famous bad wife who, when my ex-husband asked me to um, hem his work pants, I used the staplers. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was just terrible. But you see, ninja costume is the easiest thing to make. So I got his father's old black T-shirt and cut it straight down the middle so he could pull the edges together like a robe. And I gave him a black scarf to tie around his waist. Another smaller black T-shirt to cover his head using the neck opening for his eyes and tie the sleeves in the back. A pair of black pants and black socks. We um, spray painted his old sneakers black. And the cute little ninja was born. <laughs> Hiya! <laughs> you must follow the way of shinobi. Courage, honor, and wisdom. I was giving him my own made-up ninja code. <laughs> Always remain invisible. Never boast of your achievements. Us. Hiya! <laughs> so that's what he was every Halloween. Over the years, he added his own touch, a cardboard samurai swords, uh, origami ninja stars, and the white hachimaki headbands with the bright red sun in the middle of his forehead like the national flag of Japan. So when my son was in fourth grade, he went trick-or-treating with two of his soccer friends, a big shy boy named Carlos and Megan, an athletic redhead with a face full of freckles. I drove my little ninja to Megan's house. Carlos was just arriving too, wearing a Frankenstein mask and a red tie. I rang the doorbell and Megan came to the door. She was wearing this beautiful princess dress, all pink satin and white lace, but on her head was a black witch hat and her face was painted green. I forgot to tell my mom I wanted to be a witch this year, Megan explained. So she made me this dress and now I have to wear it. You, you should have told me sooner, Megan's mother Karen sounded, sounded exasperated. Um, you always wanted to be a princess before. It's all right, I said. There's nothing wrong with being a princess witch. Karen, this dress is amazing. I wish I could sew like that. Well, 
Mevan's house sat on a little cul-de-sac with a dozen or so lovely small homes all around. So the kids' plan was to go around the cul-de-sac trick-or-treating and come back to Megan's house for a candy party. I know most of my neighbors and it's safe, Karen assured me. You and I can stay here, Motoko. Uh, well, I think I'd like to go with them, you know, keep an eye on them, I said, being the helicopter parent I am, <laughs> ready to hover. <laughs> Oh, Mom, my son rolled his eyes. Don't worry, Charlie, I'll hide in the bushes. Nobody will see me. (laughs) Mom, I'm the ninja, not you. (laughs) So stealthily, I followed the three uh, uh, kids going round from house to house uh, and always hiding a little bit in in the shadows and watched them uh, fill their bags with candies. Sometimes the people asked, what are you? And Megan would say, I'm a princess witch. And my son would say, I'm a ninja. Hiya. Uh, Carlos said nothing, mostly because he was shy, but also because it was obvious. I thought it was funny that nobody asked him why a Frankenstein was wearing a red tie. (laughs) But we had almost gone around the entire cul-de-sac. There were only a couple of houses left. One was all dark, and it looked as if nobody was home. So we went to this other one, a small single-story ranch with slate blue shingles. The porch light was on, so I hid behind a little cypress tree near the front door as Carlos went up the steps and rang the doorbell. After a while, the door opened. And we saw an old man uh, with uh, gray hair, wearing brown sweater and uh, gray pants. He was, uh, he looked much older than my father, probably in his mid-70s, and slightly bent over. Trick or treat, the kids shouted. The old man reached over with his left hand and dropped a few candies into Carlos's bag. It was then I noticed And so did the kids that the old man's right arm was missing. The sleeve of his brown sweater hung empty by his side. I, I, I'm a princess witch. Megan's voice was soft and squeaky. The old man reached over again and gave Megan a few candies. Then he turned his gaze to my son. And what are you? His deep, gravelly voice contained no joy. A stinking kamikaze? I flinched, but my son was unfazed. He said, no, sir, I'm a ninja. Hiya! The old man glared at my son for a few moments, then hissed, get out of here. He slammed the door with his left hand. What was that about? Carlos was mystified as we made our way back to Megan's house. Why didn't the old man give Charlie anything? I don't know, Megan said. I have only seen the old man once before. His name is Mr. Tar... Tarnoski or something. Mom, what's a kamikaze? My son asked. It's kamikaze. It means spirit wind. But the old man was talking about the Japanese military pilots who did suicide attacks during World War II. What's a suicide attack? Well, toward the end of the war, Japan was losing and they were desperate. So they made young pilots fly into American warships with a missile tied to the plane and with no fuel for returning. That's crazy, Carlos said. That's stupid. My son said, crazy, yes, stupid, yes. Sometimes in a war, you are forced to obey very stupid orders. Megan's house was aglow with orange lights from the plastic pumpkin lanterns. While we were gone, Karen had decorated her entire living room with black and orange balloons, rubber bats and spiders, and plastic skeletons, frosted cookies shaped like ghosts, and of course, more candies. Carlos's father was there too, wearing a Jason mask and a red tie. How was trick-or-treating? Karen asked. The one-armed man was mean to Charlie. 
Megan squinched up her green face. And he said some kind of a bad word. What? What happened? It's all right, Megan. I can explain, I said. You can go and play. So as we watched the kids play and gorge on candies, I explained to Karen what had happened. I'm so sorry that happened, Karen said. Joe Tarnowski is a veteran. He lost his arm during his service in World War II. I figured as much, I said. His wife passed away a while back. I met his daughter once and she told me. But she doesn't come around much, so Joe's all by himself. But I'm guessing he's doing all right. Carlos's father was teaching the kids how to carve their own pumpkins. Ah, this was so much fun, Megan sighed. Mom, I want to be a ninja next year. A girl can't be a ninja, Carlos said. Yes, she can, my son said. Right, Mom? Yes, there were lots of girl ninjas as well as boy ninjas in Japan hundreds of years ago. You mean ninjas were real? Megan was amazed. I thought they were fake, you know, like witches. Both witches and ninjas were real people with certain useful skills, I explained. If you really want to be a ninja next year, I will teach you how to make origami ninja stars. In that case, Carlos declared, I'll be a Jason ninja. <laughs> so the following year, the three ninjas, well, including one with the Jason mask and the red tie, <laughs> went around the same cul-de-sac trick-or-treating, except this time I was not allowed to come. My son absolutely forbade me from following them. So what I'm about to tell you is my son's account of what happened, verified by Megan, Carlos, Megan's mother, Karen, and the police. <laughs> they had decided ahead of time to skip Mr. Tarnowski's house altogether. I mean, their uh, bags were more or less full of candies by the time they got near his house anyway. So they were walking by quickly on the sidewalk. It was then they smelled it, an acrid smell of burning metal. They looked and saw black smoke pouring out of a side window. Megan gasped and, and started to run, followed by Charlie and Carlos. The big bay window facing the street was curtained and dark. Megan rang the doorbell, but no one answered. What should we do? What should we do? Carlos's voice was rising in panic. Quick, Megan, go home and let your mother know. Ask her to call 911, my son said. But, 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 Megan hesitated. You run faster than me or Carlos. Now hurry. Megan sprinted. Carlos kept banging on the front door. My son went around to the side window, which was ha halfway open. Through the smoke, he could see blackened kettle on the red hot electric stove. Beyond the kitchen in the dark, he saw a flickering blue light. He ran back to the front. Carlos said, maybe no one's home. He is home. The TV is on. Come on, we got to keep banging. Mr. Tarnowski! Mr. Tarnowski! Still no answer. We got to break this window. Charlie looked around and found a, a big flat stone. He picked it up with both hands and lifted it above his head. And just then, the door opened and the old man stumbled out, coughing violently, choking with smoke. He collapsed on the ground, gasping for air. Mr. Tarnowski, are you all right? the old man's glazed eyes opened and saw two ninjas, one with a Jason mask and a red tie and the other one with a white hachimaki headband with the bright red sun in the middle of his forehead. As he lifted his only arm to reach for the boys, they could hear the sirens of ambulance and the fire truck approaching. 
Mr. Tarnowski was hospitalized for a few days, but he was all right. He had fallen asleep in front of a TV and forgot that he had put the kettle on. But the house, the damage to the house was minimum too. About a week after the accident, a police officer called me, Karen, and Carlos's father, saying, Joe Tarnowski and his daughter would like to know the names of the children who saved him. Do I have your permission? Uh, let me ask the kids, sir, and I will get back to you. Now, I was hoping that the kids would say yes, so Mr. Tarnowski could thank them in person. But Charlie, Megan, and Carlos decided no. But why not? I asked my son. Are you guys feeling too shy? No. Well, maybe Carlos is, but that's not why. <laughs> then why don't you want Mr. Tarnowski to know who you are? I'm the ninja, remember? My son laughed. The way of shinobi, courage, honor, and wisdom? Always remain invisible. Never boast of your achievements, right? It's so much cooler to be remembered just as the three ninjas. Hiya! <laughs> Thanks for joining us for a little story from the Appleseed.